In this video, we will be reviewing some ethical concepts. This is part one because there's a lot of topics in ethics, but for these five questions, we will be going over the nurse's role in informed consent, code status, privacy versus HIPAA, and religious and cultural preferences. If you want more information on these topics, you can usually find it under the legal, ethical, foundations, or fundamentals areas of your nursing resources. So as we get to the questions, I will read it for those listening, pause to let you think before I provide the options, then I will read the four choices and we will discuss how we got to that answer. Let's get started. Question number one. A patient is going to have a cardiac catheterization to diagnose chest pain episodes. The doctor obtains informed consent. As the patient is being wheeled down the hall, she states to the nurse, will the needle hurt when they stick it into my heart? What should the nurse do? Should the nurse do number one, let the nurse manager know. Number two, ask the patient why she feels the needle will hurt. Number three, stop the procedure and call the doctor. Or number four, explain that it won't hurt because she will be medicated. The answer here is number three. If we look back at the question, the key here is that the doctor has already obtained informed consent and now she has a question and it does say do remember do implies what is your action and I have to decide am I still assessing or ready to intervene and the fact that she has already signed informed consent really means she should not have this type of question so your thought should have been to stop the procedure and call the doctor so therefore the answer was number three if you had a problem with this question just review as to what the nurse's role is after consent is signed, we can't inform her any further and she really shouldn't have a question like that if, quote, she has been informed prior to signing. Next question. Number two, a patient is going to have a cardiac catheterization to diagnose chest pain episodes. The doctor will consent the patient in the procedural waiting area. As the patient is being wheeled down the hall, she states to the nurse, Will the needle hurt when they stick it into my heart? What should the nurse do? Should you, number one, let the nurse manager know. Number two, ask the patient why she feels the needle will hurt. Number three, stop the procedure and call the doctor. Or number four, explain that it will not hurt because she will be medicated. The answer here is number two. In the question, it says that she has not been consented yet. And yes, she has a question about the procedure, but if she hasn't been consented yet, it's not surprising she has a question. And then it's our focus word is do. So we're still deciding, are we assessing still? Or are we ready to intervene or take action? And so in this case, because consent has not been signed yet, the thought should have been, we can seek some understanding of to why she might have this question, but we are not allowed to legally answer her. So that is why number two is the best response. So as I mentioned, further learning, look at what your role is maybe before they have signed. How would you respond to them if they have a question? You can kind of say, you know, what's making you feel like that or what have you heard about it, but you can't answer her. We're not allowed to answer any questions about informed consent, but we can help advocate if the patient has questions. So you can tell that patient when we get to where the doctor is, I can help you ask the questions that you want to ask. Question number three, the parents of a toddler with a congenital birth defect that is declining have been staying with him day and night. The nurse is in the room and it appears that death is now imminent. What should the nurse do next? Should you, number one, console the parents as the child passes? Number two, call for assistance. Number three, remove the parents from the room. Number four, make sure the do not resuscitate order or DNR is in the chart. 
The answer here is number two. If we look back at the question, we have to focus on that death is now imminent. It does not say the child is a DNR anymore. And just because the child has a congenital birth defect does not mean the parents made them a DNR. So what should we do next? We have the data that the child is passing. And banner information, as some of us call it, banner information is you know, allergies, code status, um, and isolation precautions, those kind of things should have already been confirmed after getting report and before walking into that patient's room. You never want to walk into a patient's room if you don't know their code status. I mean, God forbid something's going on and you don't know whether to code that patient or not. So the other key here is because you are already in the room, that implies that you already know what the code status is. And we can't imply that the child is a do not resuscitate. It never said anything like that. So the answer here is because you have that the child is dying, just like we would do for anybody who's dying, we would call for help, probably a code. And that is why number two is your answer. So further learning here, in nursing questions, maybe it'll be helpful to pay attention to where you are physically. That can help with the answer sometimes. And then just a reminder that code status along with the other banner information, yeah, like allergies and isolation precautions, should be confirmed by the chart after receiving assignment and known before entering that patient's room. Number four, a client has been trying to get pregnant for months. Her recent pregnancy test comes back positive. The nurse calls the client and speaks to the husband to tell the good news. The wife calls later that day and seems cold and distant. How can the nurse interpret this reaction? Is it number one, the nurse violated privacy by telling the husband? Number two, depression is common in early pregnancy. Number three, the stresses of long-awaited pregnancy can put stress on a marriage. Number four, the nurse violated HIPAA by telling the husband. The answer here is number four. So if we look back at the question, the pregnancy test is positive and instead of telling the patient, the nurse has told the husband. And so how can we interpret this reaction? The patient has a right to privacy but the nurse violated HIPAA, which is a violation of confidentiality. So just remember that the right to privacy belongs to the patient. And then if the nurse breaks that, the nurse has violated the HIPAA confidentiality. So the answer is number four, and HIPAA guidelines do not allow the sharing of medical information with anyone but the patient and the direct care provider or somebody with written permission from the patient, unless the patient is a minor or there is a duty to warn. The duty to warn you see more in the psych course if somebody is admitted and they have said they want to harm you know, their neighbor or something, that's the duty to warn. Question number five. An adult has a slow bleed after attempted aneurysm repair. Because of the unstable condition, he is in an IC unit where visitors are restricted. The client and family insist on having a medicine man visit. How should the nurse interpret this request? Number one, the principle of justice prohibits giving one client privileges that others don't. Number two, faith healers do not meet the standard for clergy exemptions on visitation policy. Number three, Medicine men are not approved by the hospital as legitimate health care workers. Or number four, provision of holistic care requires that the client's belief system be honored. The answer here is number four. If we look back at the question, the client and the family are asking for a medicine man, which is a cultural or religious preference. And then it's saying, how should we, we interpret this? And the thought was to allow it. We are to allow cultural and religious beliefs unless for some reason they're contraindicated or unsafe for the patient in any way. And therefore, number four is the answer. Allow them whenever possible. Thank you for joining me on this review on ethics. Stay tuned for part two. Hope you enjoyed the content and critically thinking through some questions. If you like these kind of videos, subscribe to our channel, Science Strategies, and you can always find us at sciencestrategies.com.